Hello everyone. Last time, we talked about the history of the Humani Trolls, and we ended it at the time where the humans and high elves, they teamed up and unleashed fiery torment upon their foes. This event marked a dark turning point for trolls in general, but the Amani, they would never let go of the dream to retake their land and take out their ancient enemy. An opportunity presented itself when the Horde stepped through the dark portal and started its first invasion of Azeroth. Stormwind fell, its survivors fled to Lordaeron, the alliance of Lordaeron was formed, and Enemy Lothar called upon that ancient pledge of the High Elves. He was part of Foradin's line, but Anisterian Sunstrider only sent a small elven fleet to the alliance, commanding the rest of the forces to stay in Quel'Thalas. Rumors had indeed reached them about strange creatures in the south, but the High Elf King did not consider them a threat. Illyria Windrunner, she disagreed with the notion and brought a handful of her fellow elves south. She believed the Horde was a much greater threat than most of her kin did, and she was determined to see what the Orcs could do with her very own eyes. Turned out that it was quite a lot that the Horde could do. Now led by Orgrim Doomhammer, he'd been able to sack Stormwind City, they enslaved the Red Dragons and the Queen Alexstrasza, they'd created Death Knights, and even befriended the Amani Trolls. The Trolls had not forgotten about their long and bitter history of conflict with the humans, and they had rejoiced upon learning of Stormwind's destruction. The Amani saw the Orcs as potential allies, but in exchange for Doomhammer, aid. Their current leader, Warlord Zul'jin, he'd been captured by humans and chained up in a prison near the town of Hillsbrad. Now if the orcs helped them liberate Zul'jin, these trolls would agree to fight for the hordes. From captured, tortured humans, the horde had learned of many more powerful human nations to the north, but none of them compared to Lordaeron. It was the heart of human culture, so if the horde was able to conquer its seat of power, capital city, then Doomhammer believed that the other kingdoms would fall in turn. That did of course mean that they had to reach Lordaeron first, so ships were built, the Amani instructed them them on how to make small but swift ships that could safely navigate the seas and rivers, and the Horde eventually set sail to the Hillsbred foothills. When the Alliance and Horde clashed, they were quite evenly matched, but Doomhammer knew that that would not last forever. The longer the Orcs stayed in Hillsbred, the more time the Alliance had to call in reinforcements. The human army was protected the quickest routes to Lord Ron's capital, so their only course of action was to go east and find another way to the city. The Amani Trolls, they turned out to be a great help for this, as they knew the land a lot better than the Orcs, they were willing to guide them, but not before Doomhammer made good on his promise and liberated their leader. Orc scouts had discovered the trolls' whereabouts in a prison camp near Durnhold Keep. As battle continued on across Hillsbred, Doomhammer himself led a raiding party to rescue Zul'jin. The prison's defenders, they stood little chance against the attack. After freeing Zul'jin, Doomhammer invited him and the rest of the people to stand with the Horde. At first, Zul'jin wasn't too keen on the idea of joining them. After all, he was the warlord of the Great Amani. He would answer to no one but himself. Doomhammer actually agreed to that. If the Amani pledged themselves to the Horde, they would not become their servants. Zul'jin would still have full control over his people, and together with Doomhammer, they would stand as equals against their enemies. The Warchief was finally able to win Zul'jin's support with a simple offer. If the Amani committed their forces to the Horde, the Orcs in turn would help them annihilate their rivals, the High Elves of Quel'Thalas. Attacking the magical city, it would mean moving further north from Lordaeron's capital, further than Doomhammer wanted to go, but it was a necessary risk. The battle at Hillsbrad, it had taught them many things about the Alliance, like the power of their paladins and their formidable force being equal to that of their death knights. To win the war, Doomhammer simply needed the Amani support, so he ordered the Horde to turn east, cross through Hillsbrad, and move through a narrow mountain pass into a region known as the Hinterlands. Though the land was rugged, the Horde moved quickly with their Amani guides, the trolls led the orcs on a path that would take them over the northern mountains and into Quel'Thalas. Along the way, Zul'jin rallied the local Amani trolls to his side, rallying them to to take on their ancient enemy and fight for the Horde. This area, however, it was home to the Wildhammer Dwarves, who don't take kindly on strangers invading their lands. From on high, they rain lightning and thunder down upon the Horde. Doomhammer then led his troops in assault on Airy Peak, forcing the Dwarves to rally together and defend their capital. Even behind half his forces to keep the Dwarves busy, the Horde then pulled back and continued the journey north. Thankfully for the Dwarves, Lothar and his army, they arrived in the Hinterlands and they came to the Wildhammer's aid, earning their support in the war against the Horde. And when Lothar realized, that half of the Horde had slipped past them, so he quickly sent Terellian, Illyria Windrunner, and a large part of the army to track Orgrim down, while the rest of the forces, they remained behind to deal with the remaining Horde in the Hinterlands. Orgrim and half of the Horde, they managed to travel to Quel'Thalas unopposed. Zul'jin made a quick trip to the Yamani capital, Zulaman, to get him more allies, whipping his people into a frenzy, with the promise of spilling elven blood. Thousands of trolls, wearing enchanted talismans and ritual tattoos, they streamed out of Zulaman and they took their place next to Orgrim's horde. 
Hobbits. An army, the likes of which the High Elves had not faced in thousands of years, soon loomed on Quelphalus's borders. The Horde quickly decimated the kingdom's outer holdings, but as they moved further north, they found out that many of the Death Knights and their Armani Witch Doctors, they were no longer able to wield their magics. It was the Warlock Gul'dan who discovered what was dampening their powers, the magical barrier around the kingdom, Bandinoriel or the Gatekeeper. That, which was designed to shield the use of arcane magic from the Legion, it also weakened the powers of the Elves' enemies, such as the Amani Trolls. This is not the first time that the Trolls found out about the stones. As you might imagine, they've been trying to take out the Elves for a very long time. One time, as the Elves went to investigate a defective rune stone, the Amani were able to ambush and capture them. Liadrin, Darkan, the priest Galel, and even Lieutenant Lorfmar Faran, they were taken as prisoners, and the witch doctors used smoke to pacify them. With the smoke also came visions, but the trolls wanted information. The smoke veil parted to reveal a troll squatting down in front of Liadrin. He wore an open leather vest, the lower half of his face was wrapped in a long cloth, his eyes widened, and twin jets of flame shot out. You be guilty, guilty of driving us out of our own land. Two weather trolls sat on either side of Lorfamar, their lower faces wrapped as well. He still twitched and convulsed, his eyes shut tight as he fought through his own horrific visions. The trolls pounded their spears on the stone floor. Guilty, 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 or making us hide like animals. Guilty or killing me brothers and sisters. Guilty or thinking you owned everything around you. Guilty or being foolish enough to think you're gonna succeed where the other failed. The troll paused for a moment, studying her. His eyes were bright as a chuckle rumbled deep in his throat. She merely assumed that this was Zul'jin. She had heard stories of the fearsome troll leader, who staged brazen raids against even the most heavily guarded elven villages. Somehow, he always managed to infiltrate the defenses, and somehow, he always managed to inflict damage and casualties, and escape with his own life intact. He has grown infamous for his ruthlessness and cunning. The Akia tried to make our ancestors go away. The Night Elves tried to make us go away. Then you tried to make us go away. But... He leaned close, twisting his head from side to side. We be like a bad dream. Liadrin blinked, and suddenly Zul'jin's scarf was a massive constrictor coiling around the leader's neck and face. That just won't go away. The snake lifted his giant head and opened wide to reveal row after row of needlepoint teeth. Liadrin blinked once again, and the snake was gone, replaced by the tethered scar. And since we won't go away, I think we should retake our land, burn your pretty buildings, send you running back the way you came. But it won't be easy, you'll be tricky. He reached to his side and drew a three foot long wave bladed dagger. Your rune stones make our magic weak. Your own magic be protecting your cities. But I've been watching. I've been thinking. Zul'jin patted the point of the blade against his temple as he squatted down in front of Lorfmar now. I think you get your power from that fountain of light. What you call it, the sun well? Yeah, I think it gives you the power. And without it, maybe your magic not so great after all. Zul'jin traced the tip of the blade down lore from her stomach and chest, barely brushing the surface of his skin. I wanna know how to overpower the rune stones. I wanna know everything about that sun well and its defenses. So, Liadrin thought, they do not know how to sabotage the rune stones. He stood and looked toward Liadrin and the others. Your friend here. Maybe he don't talk. He be a ranger, no? They a tough breed. But you see him get skinned alive, hear him scream till he got no more breath left. Maybe one of you think twice, maybe one of you talk. I'll give you a chance right now, one chance. Zul'jin looked first at Liadrin and then at Darkon. He glanced quickly at Galel, whose eyes were still closed. There was a long moment of silence. That'd be no surprise to me. You too proud. Maybe you like the fighting, the killing. I'll tell you something. We gonna fight till there be no more of us left to fight. You gonna see what we be made of. Eagerly fingering the tip of his blade, Zul'jin squatted down inches away from Lorfamar. But first, I gonna open you up and see what you be made of. No! Liadrin shouted. Get away! Her head spun to Darkan, her eyes imploring him to take action. His own eyes shut to her, wide with fear. At that moment, he looked very lost and completely helpless. He shook his head. His ability to cast had not yet returned. The dagger's tip pierced Lorfamar's skin just below the navel. 
Zuljin drew the blade down in a long vertical slice. It not gonna be quick. Liodrin immediately attempted to call upon the light to begin healing the wounds, but the smoke still acted as a wall in her mind. As for Lorfmar, he did not cry out. He was intently focused on the task that he had begun mere seconds before. He had regained a measure of mobility in his hands, and he worked now to coax out the miniature blade that he carried under his belt. Blood flowed freely. Zuljin thrust his spindly fingers into the open wounds, and now Lorfmar screamed. <coughs> They were able to find a way out of there, with Darkon regaining enough of his power to teleport them away. Now it's Gul'dan, who's examining the elven runestones, and he believes that not only will he be able to dismantle them and bring power back to the hordes, but he can even turn them into an altar of storms and create new two-headed ogre magi. Orgrim didn't really trust him, but he still agreed to the plan, not knowing that Gul'dan was actually planning to abandon the hordes and that these new ogre magi were only loyal to him. All the same, with their runestones desecrated, Orgrim's forces stormed towards Quelphalus. But Quelphalus did not have to hold out alone against the Horde for very long. Terellian, Illyria, and half of the Alliance army, they showed up, and Anastarian didn't need a lot of convincing to pledge their forces to the Alliance. Not since the ancient troll wars had the elves died in such numbers. Not since that terrible time had their lands been so defiled. Humans and elves banded together once again. Unfortunately, the Horde had more tricks up its sleeve, as they had the Red Dragonflight enslaved, who now showed up and burned a whole bunch of the Alliance forces, but the High Elves, they used the Might of the Sunwell to create a shield around Silvermoon City. The Horde smashed against the shield again and again, but the barrier did not give away. Even the Red Dragon's mystical fire could not breach it, and Orgrim's patience was quickly wearing thin. Destroying the High Elven stronghold, it had never been his priority, Lord Ron's capital was. The Orgrim had not yet held up his end of the bargain with the Amani, he decided to take his forces and move to Lord Ron's capital city. Now not all of Doomhammer's allies agree with this plan. Zuljin and the Amani, they straight up rejected the war chief's call to go west. Their hatred of the elves, it burned so hot that they would not abandon the siege of Silvermoon. Zuljin did vow that he would attack Lord Ron's capital city only after all of Quelphalus was in flames and he held King Anastarian's severed head in his hands. His stubbornness was both infuriating and troubling. Doomhammer had relied heavily on the Amani to guide the through a land that was not their own. Losing the trolls now, at this critical moment in the war, it could spell doom for the hordes, and it was Gul'dan that convinced Orgrim and Zul'jin that his clan had found a new way to destroy this barrier around the city. All it would take was a few more days, and once they had succeeded, the elven city would surely fall, the trolls could get all the vengeance that they desired, and then they could rejoin the hordes. Doomhammer once again agreed to the plan, but Gul'dan would go on to abandon the horde in pursuit of his own goals, his own lust for power. Some of the remaining forces, they actually joined him on his journey to the Tomb of Sagaris, but the Amani trolls had no interest in this call. They continued their siege on the elven capital, while Illyria, Trevelyan, and the Alliance armies, they pursued the horde to the capital city, while Sylvanas Windrunner and several of their forces, they remained behind to eliminate the lingering threat. In this, King Anastarian saw an opportunity to forever change the balance of power between the elves and the trolls. He dispatched magi and priests to aid the rangers in rounding up and wiping out all of the remaining Amani forces. Liadrin was assigned to a platoon led by Haldron Brightwing. The skies were the color of blood that day, the air reeking of ash and fire, and their lungs burned as blazing infernos consumed their forests. And it was on that day, unknowingly and quite accidentally, that Haldron's group managed to trap and capture the legendary Zul'jin. The fires had burned unpredictably, and so it was that Zul'jin and a handful of his comrades, they found themselves cut off from the bulk of their Amani brethren and driven near the shores of Deromer Lake. Haldoran and his rangers, they cut down Zul'jin's comrades, cornered the renegade himself in the perishing remains of some long-forgotten troll ruin. Zul'jin didn't go out without a fight though. He lashed out like a rabid beast, but the elves, they were successful in stripping him of his weapons, beating him relentlessly and chaining him to a stone pillar. Zul'jin wasn't the only one cut off from their forces. Haldoran was also cut off from Sylvanas, and their scouts couldn't find a way through the flames. So it was decided that the rangers would wait. Isolated and battle-weary, Haldoran alone held the fate of Zul'jin in his hands. Many of his troops had lost friends or loved ones to Zul'jin's bloody campaigns and their fury took control. As the sun set, the beatings of the troll continued, growing in severity until one of Haldoran's men decided to take a blade and pluck out Zul'jin's eye. <coughs> the Aldrin simply couldn't take it anymore. The torment was pointless. If we're going to kill him, let us be done with it. But Haldoran, he couldn't make that decision, and he also couldn't get in touch with those that could. 
They didn't have much time to consider their situation. As a group of scattered Amani trolls, they attacked them. The High Elves had to fight for their lives, and upon returning to the Ruin, Liadrin was greeted by a sight that will forever burn itself into a memory. The chain, trailing to the dirt, yet held fast to the stone pillar, ended in a manacle still clamped to Zul'jin's arm. It lay there on the ground, severed just below the shoulder, an alarming amount of blood soaked the dirt in a white radius. And so, the infamous Zul'jin had escaped once again, this time by sawing off his own arm, a feat that would solidify his legendary status amongst trolls all over the world. In the years to come, the war cry for Zul'jin became an all too familiar refrain, especially amongst the Amani. The old troll himself, however, he disappeared for a while, and while the Alliance had been successful in saving the capital city and was now besieging Blackrock Spire, King Anastarian himself led the charge to drive the Amani trolls for Quelphalus. The battles were costly, but the elves did manage to secure the homeland. In the years to come, Anastarian would withdraw from the Alliance, accusing it of abandoning the High Elves in their most desperate hour. Not all High Elves believed that, but enough of them did, despite Anastarian at the start of the war only sending a token force to assist the Alliance to begin with. All the same, the first Horde invasion was prevented, and the Alliance Lordaeron was able to save their world. More threats would rise up though. Arthas and the Scourge would take the high home of the Elves and corrupt the Sunwell by resurrecting Kel'Fuzad. The High Elves, now calling themselves Blood Elves, led by Kill for Sunstrider, they had to deal with the remaining undead, the loss of their Sunwell, and the Amani that tried to make use of this opportunity. They had just witnessed the Scourge accomplish what they had tried to do for generations, and Liadon remembered that Zul'jin had been obsessed with the Sunwell. It was of course uncertain if the troll leader was actually amongst the Amani now rallying for war, but they did believe that the Sunwell was their target. Prince Kilfa Sunstrider, now their leader, figured that if the trolls wanted their son well, then they would have it. There were still a lot of undead, more each day gathering on the Isle of Queldenas, and since the resurrection of Kel'Fuzad had corrupted their founder power, Kilfas decided to blow it up and take all of their enemies out with it. As Kilfas, Romav and Astalor wove their spell, the rest of their forces held off the undead and the Imani. At the very last second, all of them teleported out as the blinding white beam exploded outwards, vaporizing every everything and everyone in its path. And when it dissipated, it let nothing of the sun well but a dark and empty hole. As we discovered with the Burning Crusade, Zul'jin was not part of the Amani that perished in that explosion, nor were all the Amani wiped out. Treasure hunters of the Alliance foolishly infiltrated Zulaman. Almost all of them were killed, but one of them managed to escape and was found dying by Haldoran's forces. He spoke of dark rituals, animal gods, and profane sacrifices. He also spoke a single name over and over again before his final breath, Zul'jin. This was our land. Troll land. We, Amani, was here before anyone. The elves and their alliance came to drive us out. But we never give up. We never Alongside the horde, I spit on the horde. I hate you. I hate you all. But I got a surprise for you now. So come on in. Money never give up. We never forget. We never die. This is our land. 
You wanna stay. You stay here forever. We gonna bury you here. In the lower city of Shafrenth, the troll Grifta promised adventurer Shiny just waiting to be picked up. He sent us over to Butt Netrek, who's waiting just outside of Zulaman. Now he already lost his latest partner. But hey, what can you do? Great rewards often have a high price. We're close to making history here in Zulaman, and we get to help him out. First, we need to collect a map that's gone missing, as well as the recruits that he landed to. But Butt only really cares about the map. After picking it up, we're sent in to investigate the different platforms to fill the map up further. Until the last mission given by Butt, it has us take care of Hexlord Malakras. With him out of the way, Butt's ready to make another mark on history, but he's afraid that our time together, the dead has come to an end and he has to let us go. The petulant little man is trying to steal our glory, but he will get what's coming to him soon enough. So inside Zulaman, we found six different bosses and a couple of mini events that were kind of cool to do. The troll bosses that we faced, they mostly took their names from the Loa spirits empowering them, which explains why we faced the same bosses with the revamp during the Cataclysm. There was Akil Zon, a former shaman of the Amani tribe. Akil Zon had a natural ability when working with the element of air. This talent caught the eye of Hexlord Malakras and made finding a host for the troll's ego god a very easy task. God, kill me. Spirit. Nalorak, renowned for both his fearsome rage and savage strength on the battlefield, he was considered the ideal vessel for the essence of the bear god. In the fights, he would actually switch between his troll form and his bear form. Then there's Janalai. Dragonhawks are death predators that rend their foes with razor sharp talons. This mindset and method of attack were also favored by one of the Amani tribe's highly skilled rogues, Janalal. During his fights, massive waves of Dragonhawks would actually assault his foes. Where Mehacha? Get to work on them eggs! Then Halazi, the lynxes of Azeroth are vicious hunters that shred their prey with fang and claw. Hexlord Malakras mused that it was only right to seal the essence of the lynx god with one of the tribe's greatest hunters. Totems and the spirit of the lynx, they assisted Halazi in his battle. Chaga, chaga, now as we ventured through Zulaman and we took on these mighty trolls, Malakras taunted us along the way, offering to use us as sacrifices as well, since the Imani had taken a couple of prisoners to be sacrificed. You not do too bad! Your efforts delayed the inevitable for a small time. Come to me now. You prove yourselves worthy offerings. If you managed to defeat the first bosses before the timer ran out, if you were able to save these prisoners before they were sacrificed, you'd be able to get your hands on some very special loot. Back then, it was the Amani War Bear, but he's been removed with Wrath the Lich King and has since been replaced with the Amani Battle Bear during the Cataclysm revamp. Now on the bodies of the dead Amani trolls that we fight along the way, we also find some Amani hex sticks we could use on the forest frogs hopping around in the area. These are mostly people hexed by the trolls, some would offer you vendor possibilities, some would offer you some gold and whatnot, but sometimes you actually get a very special frog pet called Mojo. So after the four initial bosses, it's time to move further in and take on this Hexlord Malakras. Rumored to be the most feared witch doctor of the Amani tribe in decades, Malakras has done the unthinkable and sealed the essence of several mighty troll animal gods within their strongest champions, keeping the darkest one for himself. He actually came with two ads and would steal the powers of his enemies and use it against them. After taking him out, the door opened up and Warlord Zul'jin was the only one left standing. This not the end for me. Everybody always wanna take from us. Now we gonna start taking back. Anybody who get in our way gonna drown in their own blood. The Amani Empire be back now. Seeking vengeance. And we gonna start with you. His fights came in five different phases, where he switched through all of the animal aspects that we encountered before, and of course, he would also fight with his own troll body. He still hasn't regenerated his arm, which might be because the Loa were not too happy with being enslaved by the Amani. It could also be a personal choice, as we see with Vol'jin in the novel Shadows of the Horde. But all the same, we fight with the leader of the Amani, we take on all the power that he has gathered, and we end his life. Maybe me fall. But the Amani Empire never gonna die. 
from his body. We take a vial filled with the blood of Zul'jin, and we take it back to Butt, as we can't wait to see the expression on his face. But tries to mask his displeasure at our presence, using the blood to proclaim his victory over Zul'jin, completely pushing us to the side as he tosses it into the fire of a burning building. Dark spirits then assault the net wreck. They lift him up into the air. They pull him into the burning building as well. He is able to run out with his life still intact, but this moment would change but forever. Ahoy! I'm sailing! For a while, it was quiet in Zulaman, and the story of Zul'jin ends here. But like I said, Zulaman underwent a revamp with the Cataclysm, where the Zandalari, they returned to take care of their people, and try to unite them once more. Zul'jin of the Dark Spear! You would turn your back on your own people? The Horde is my people. If it be war you bring, then I stand against you. Even Vol'jin of the Darkspear tribe was invited to stand with them, but the Horde was his family and he warned the world of this rising threat. So it was that heroes of the Alliance and Horde returned to Zulaman once again. They took care of the threats inside, they saved the prisoners again, and they took out their new warlord Takara. Oh now, everybody tried to keep the Amani Empire down. Now, we got friends. We with the Zandalari now. We part of something bigger. You can't stop us all! The whole world going to drown in blood! <laughs> to fill the power vacuum left from the death of their old warlord Zul'jin, the remaining trolls of the Amani tribe chose their favorite champion, Drakara the Invincible, to reclaim their lost glory. This is something that the trolls have been trying to do for a very long time, trying to go back to the days where they were the ones who ruled the land of Azeroth. <laughs> Maybe me for. But the Amani Empire never going to die. Their latest attempt, that was with Mr. Pandaria, where the Amani joined the Zandalari and other tribes to invade Pandaria. But again, they failed. Perhaps one day, they will be able to find the strength to return to those glory days. But for now, this is where the story ends. A huge thank you to Kalis for making a brilliant machinima and helping me bring this story to life. The voices you heard were from the lovely Charm as Liadrin and the one and only Krendor voicing Zul'jin. Check out the channels in the description down below and I really hope you enjoyed this video everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos and until next time guys, see ya!